Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Parasite Podcast, and I am here today with a really good friend of mine I've known for many years now, almost 10 years I think, and uh, and his name is Andy, he's a really great guy, journalist, uh, covers a lot of DC topics, including the DC Podcast and all the shows that are tied to it. So Andy, say a little bit about yourself, tell, where, uh, tell people where they can find you online. Hi everyone. Uh, I my name is Andy Bagged. I also go as Andy Beat. You know, p- p- to make it simpler for people, it's totally fine. Uh, I am the the president of the DC TV Podcast Network, which is a, a great network of podcasts covering all the DC TV shows that are on air. You know, whether it's on the CW, uh, DC Universe, and soon HBO Max, and who. Good, good lords, who knows whatever else. <laughs> and I'm also the editor in chief of the Marvel Report, which has been around since 2015, covering all things Marvel. And yeah, I'm all, yeah, I write also for Screen Rant, which is where I do a lot of Arrowverse, Arrowverse slash DC content these days. So I'm uh, yeah, I'm a little bit all over the place. I'm on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Andy Backed, and uh, yeah, I'm a ho- co-host of the Flash podcast since. 2013, so that's like my biggest passion project uh, for almost for almost, almost seven years now. And uh, yeah, that I'm, uh, I'm you know I'm on I'm in all worlds uh, DC, Marvel, you name it. And yeah, I'll put a link to um, you know Andy's Twitter account and uh, some of your YouTube links and your main uh, DC TV podcast website. I'll put the links to all that down below, guys. So you're just one click away. Go down there, click on any one of those links, click on all of them, and follow Andy's work and the people that work with them because they come up with some really great shows, including an upcoming Green Lantern show pretty soon too. Um, and, you know, as you know, I'm a big fan. So uh, so Andy's, you know, how w- how long have we known each other? Probably like eight or nine years. Yeah, it's going to uh, be roughly about seven years because you and I, we go back all the way back to the first season of Marvel's Days of S.H.I.E.L.D. That's right. Which uh, actually today, you know, at the time of recording, they aired uh, the third episode of their seventh and final season, which is crazy because, you know, um, when I, I used to do a S.H.I.E.L.D. podcast back in the day, and I sadly lost my co-host uh, due to scheduling issues so early on and Seek was someone I reached out to as, as I, I started following on on Twitter because uh, he had written some amazing articles for Hollywood Reporter and that I that made me go I really want to get to know this guy so he was uh, a recurring guest host for I, I believe the first half of the season where we co- co- you know before before we knew that like, this little movie called Captain America the Winter Soldier would basically c- c- destroy the show from within <laughs> um, it was so yeah it's been seven years but over those years we've uh, g- gotten to know each other because of our love of DC and Marvel and so and now I I know it's been it's, it's kind of expanded even more so in the past two years since uh, you know you started doing Venom blog and as I started doing way too much than I should be doing <laughs> uh, so it will yeah but we we've been in touch consistently for seven years in one way or another yeah people always tell me they're like seek you gotta rest you gotta you gotta um, take a day off well, you and should. I, well I know and I, it's funny hearing you say that because I feel like you work three times as hard as I do I keep turning around I'm like oh Andy's got a screen rant article up and he's got a Marvel report thing going and he's got a flash podcast he's making and it's you are man you're very omnipresent uh, I mean that speaks volumes of your work ethic I think you out of a lot of people I've met just when I lived in LA and just like meeting people at conventions you're, I knew, like right away, you just have one of these work ethics that is unmatched by most people in the industry. And what I also like about you is that you really care about what you're saying, like what you're reporting on. You have a real love for it. And, uh, and so where does that love come from? Like when you were younger, did you get into, com- like I got into comics when I was eight years old and it was through comic books and, and like maybe some cartoons like Spider-Man and his amazing friends and stuff. But what was it for you that kind of pulled you into the world of superheroes? I am well. When it comes to comics, it didn't really begin until I was sixteen or seventeen years old because I my entry into superheroes was really through all the cartoons, you know, Spider-Man animated series, mm-hmm. aka the best Spider-Man animated series of all time. <laughs> uh, although I will give spe- spe- spectacular Spider-Man. Uh, 
a run for its, uh, you know, a, a, you know, a, t- a second tie, tied place with the first Spider-Man show because Greg Wiseman knows what he's doing, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, like Justice League Unlimited, Batman and Superman animated series, Static Shock, you know, that's how I got into the DC universe and the Marvel universe and so on. But I wasn't really through the books because I. You know, because I I have I had I was diagnosed with autism at the age of two, and I couldn't read. I, I had you know I, I started reading a little bit later than others. You know, maybe when I was around six or seven years old, mm-hmm. and I had speech you know speech speech problems all the way until age five. You know, doctors said to me that I would you know most likely never work or function properly, and. 20 years later look what I'm doing now uh, <laughs> you talk so, for a uh, living yeah. no, do, we, we, all, we always love rubbing those doctors faces in, in, you know, in their, you know, behind their backs because they didn't know what they were talking about Amen. But, uh, I, but because I had these issues I really connected with the world superheroes I, uh, Sailor Moon was one of the first superhero fragments I ever started following because I wasn't really into you know, the Transformers or the, the He-Man or like you know the, watch it, the very, watch it I'm, no, no, ki- no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm I, I kidding. Know they, they, they have great <laughs> legacies behind them, yeah. but it wasn't really for me. I sure. was more into something more, a little bit more emotional, more um, deeper, mm-hmm. and something more driven by character and you know flaws. And Sailor Moon is, I mean, she's definitely one of her most flawed characters in fiction. But she, she and all the other Sailor Scouts were, were somehow something I could connect to, and I, and that was that's also really where I began discovering, you know, the. You know, strong women in media and so on because Sailor Moon is to this day one of the most iconic franchises of all time but throughout throughout the, uh, the, that journey you know, I started watching Batman the animated series and fell in love with that universe so that, then Superman came and all these other shows came uh, but in terms of really evolving uh, into the world comics it was really through 10 years of Smallville that it got me you know that was that entered that entered my high school years. Like I was I was in high school when Clark became Superman, mm. and that's where like during my senior year I really started buying more you know started buying my first sets of comics. Like I the first books I bought was Superman Earth One Volume One by Jamie Kostroheske, who is amazing, and Batman Nightfall, Batman Year One, and you know some of all these books because I was and it was mainly because I was doing you know in in, in my in, in senior year I was doing a, a senior you know a project my senior project and it was a script and I wanted to get into script writing so I wrote my own superhero script and I used a lot of inspiration from some of those books that I that I just mentioned you know Jeff Johns was a huge influence on me and he is to this to this day and so on and through you know my senior project I'm like I just started buying comics more regularly and so on. I started buying monthly issues and a lot of trade paperbacks because like I you know everyone was telling me you need to go back and read DC Iconic and so on like I'm like okay cool got got gotcha but it also then got to a whole new level when the flash was announced in the summer of 2013 and I knew like I I'd known since that after high school that I wanted to get into podcasting beyond being a listener but you know at that point Arrow had already started my, and you know my friends Michael and Amanda from Quiver to Arrow podcast had you know they were already doing great with their Arrow podcast so I'm like I'm gonna wait till they announce a new DC show so I can really beat it from the beginning I have my own vision for it you know and I, I, I have my own way wanted to do it and then they announced The Flash I'm like you know The Flash you know I, could, I think I could get into this mythology. So I started buying all the books. I mean, Z, you were part of, uh, when you were still on Facebook, you gave me a, a list of recommendations of books I should buy. Yep. Uh, and uh, I, I got Cries on the Earth, Flash Rebirth, um, Flashpoint, <laughs> uh, and uh, so many books. Yeah. And, uh, I, and I, you know, I read pretty much all of them throughout the years and so on. But, but by, as I started accelerating my my way into the Flash universe, I, you know, I just, you know, start checking out comic book general and so on. I, I, to this, right now, I'm not really following any ongoing series, so I, you know, I try to go reading, you know, I binge reading with the graphic novels and stuff like that, but, um, yeah, it's been a very interesting journey for me in terms of how my superhero connection has really been evolving, you know, it was really mainly through Smallville, but also, you know, those early cartoons in my life, and then really, 
you know, the Flash, uh, you know, because, you know, doing the Flash pocket means, you know, you should know a lot of things about the Flash, you know, you check out the follow because there's, I mean, there's, you know, pe- people, you know, people follow Barry Allen right now on the TV show, but, you know, some of them may, you know, may not even realize that in the mythology there is way more species than just him he, more people than just Barry Allen has been in the Flash and yeah so I hope that answers your question in terms of like where you know sure everything has come and gone well, yeah no that's great I mean I love the background and uh, and I love and I do remember those times where you were like hey I'm st- I want to start up this uh, Flash podcast and want to get in on the ground level what do you recommend and and that's always my favorite thing when people ask me like hey what do you recommend comic wise because Especially then when you asked me, uh, that was, like you said, I wrote a couple things for Hollywood Reporter and I, uh, about the Arrow show and, and a couple other shows that were coming out, uh, uh, Matt Majin's The Shield being one of them as well. And I was really lucky uh, that um, Leslie and everyone over at Hollywood Reporter gave me that opportunity. And what it did was it opened a door to meet you know you and a bunch of other people and, and more people in the world of journalism and in comic books. And it kind of got people reaching out to me and me vice versa. And it, it was really nice to kind of connect with people being such a recluse and you know being health wise, having to stay indoors. And um, but hearing you talk about this stuff and get your passion from Smallville, which is to me my, still my favorite Superman anything. I love that show. I grew up watching it too. I was I was our older a little bit older I think I was in college when the show started because it was after September 11th um, 2001 yeah. but um but I was in college but still I felt like I was aging and maturing alongside Clark Kent uh, for 10 years all the way up to my aneurysm uh, so that's a long time and <laughs> that's a lot and he he was there with me the whole time and uh, so my love for Superman grew and so to see you someone who was coming in new and that's my other favorite thing is when someone's like hey I didn't grow up with comics but I I do like them now and I and I've been reading and watching cartoons for the past few years hearing your passion I could tell I mean when we met at Comic Con you were like hey I'm gonna sleep outside just so I can get into Hall H because that's how much it meant to you <laughs> that's how because you were starting out and you, you were trying to make connections and you wanted to go interview these actors and these people who make these shows that you love and these characters that you love uh, play them on TV and that was your commitment and I remember walking away from that and just going like man the dedication and me just going and I'm not the praying type, but I'm, I remember that night at Comic-Con going to my hotel room and saying a prayer for you that you would you would continue to grow as a journalist and as someone who brings your vision and view of these characters to an audience. And now you've been growing that audience over the past seven years. And I just got to say, man, as a friend, I'm really proud of you. Well, I mean, I mean, coming from you, who I've looked up to for all these years, you know, I that that means a lot. Uh, <laughs> and I, I know people who listen to that are ringing. You know, oh my God, they're getting so mushy. But you know what? <laughs> Screw it. This, you know, we we're he and I are bros, and this is this is fr- straight from our hearts. Uh, I uh, no, I mean, I I remember now, like you know, that that comic, you know, those those early comic cons, because you know, I. You know, after my first one, I couldn't really afford getting a hotel, so I right. just slept outside just because I needed somewhere to sleep. But, but yeah, I remember I wanted to get into Hall H. I wanted to watch, you know, the panels and so. I mean, I haven't been to Hall H since uh, <laughs> twenty four. Wait, I gotta remember to ping now. Um, twenty thirteen. I don't think I've been there since twenty thirteen. Uh, and people who. <laughs> The biggest evidence of that is, you know, my uh, real reaction video of when they announced Batman vs Superman, because uh, you know no one knew it was gonna happen. So when they showed the logo and then the bat showed up behind the S, you know, I lost my crap, and now that's like my most 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 viewed <laughs> video on my YouTube channel, like 1.5 million million views, which is Whoa. insane. Uh, I don't get why people are so obsessed with hearing me just going insane because uh, I can barely t- talk because I one of the things that people make fun of me with that video is because I keep saying wanting to scream the word what but instead I'm going what 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 and I'm like but because I was just so shocked about the fact that Harry Lennox came on stage read this iconic quote from the Dark Knight Returns you know I you know I want you to remember Clark the, the man who beat you right. and you know uh, and then the room goes dark, and then we see the, the the screen uh, blows up, and there's a silver Superman S, and I go woo, and then the bat <laughs> behind the S, the, the the world's finest logo yeah. that you and I have seen, you know, Batman and Superman animated series, you know, we've seen it in, you know, all these attempted at live action movies before BBS, and finally in 2013, Zack Snyder brought that logo to to, to San Diego Comic Con, and 
one Comic Con because I lost my crap. I started, you know, chanting "World's Finest, World's Finest, World's Finest," <laughs> and I just was, you know, like I that was, you know, like that's that's a true testament to me as a nerd. And you know, I remember, you know, you you know, that was probably the fa- that time you were thinking of when you know you saw me sleep outside and so on because mm-hmm. um, I really wanted to get into the BBS panel, and this was when it was a. Like, a little bit easier getting into Hall H because you didn't you know need those wristbands and right. that wristband system and so on. And now I'm just like it's, it's impossible. But now you know I'm actually because back then I didn't have a job. I was living on unemployment basically, and I couldn't do. I couldn't really live anything. Now you know I can pay my rent. I can travel to Comic Con. I can buy comics. I can buy <laughs> figurines and Funkos and stuff like that. And you know it's uh, it's been a long journey to get there. And but to hear that you've been thinking of me and supporting me from 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 you know from from a distance you know because we definitely you know we don't live i sadly we we don't live in the same city sadly because uh Mm. which we should yeah uh but um so that means a lot coming from you and i you know i I, you know i think what you've done with the venom vlog and so on and you know and your your voice in this industry is something we need more of and so i'm just as proud of you as you are of me because you know you have you really you really accomplished a lot, you know, as, and as someone who, you know, you, you talked about your aneurysm and so on, it's, you know, I mean, it's, so, some, that's, some, things like that can hold someone back, uh, you know, because they want to make sure that they, you know, but you're living your life to the fullest, you know, you know what, I almost died once, you know, and I'm going to make sure I, I, I live my life to the fullest as much as I can, I'm going to love, be a nerd, not be ashamed of it, be, you know, show it all in full levels, because, so, y'all, when I watch some of his videos, sometimes I'm like, how the hell does he put that all in his head when I can barely remember <laughs> two issues that, that I read yesterday? Yeah, I'm I'm like the Rain Man of comic books uh, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, it's funny because like some days my memory can hold a lot. It's like a bucket, so it's solid and it can hold all the water. Then other days it's like a balloon. And it can hold some water before it bursts. And there have been times where I'm about to hit record and everything I was just about to say and the comic I just read a couple hours before, it's all out of my head. It's gone. Um, so these are these are things, of course, these are obstacles that many people don't see and I don't talk about all the time. But, I, you know, then I turn and I look at someone like you and I go, all right, well, he's, <laughs> he's, he's pumping stuff out. Like, I, you know... I got to keep up, man. I got to keep up. So I, you know, it's nice because I don't look at it. It's not a competition, obviously, but it's a, it's an inspiration thing. It's like, man, Andy is, I do remember that kid that was, that couldn't afford a hotel room and was sleeping on the ground outside of Comic-Con just so he can get into the Batman versus Superman panel. And then now you're the guy that that video has a million and a half views. And now you have a network of shows and then you have all these great content you're making. So yeah, we could sit and pat each other on the back all day, but I just, I, I, I love it, man. And what I love about Andy is that he's one of those friends that just stays with you. Like, honestly, there have been so many people in LA, even Leslie and the people that, you know, uh, gave me opportunities at, um, at, uh, at Hollywood Reporter and stuff. Like, we, we kind of, people just drift apart, you know, it's nothing personal. It's just, you know, you just move with the tide and, and sometimes life takes you other places. Andy doesn't give a shit what waters I'm in. He will sail a boat out and look for me. And he'd be like, oh, you're off Facebook? Fine, I'm going to find you this way. All right, you, you're not doing that anymore? Fine, I want your phone number, and I'm going to call you. And uh, all right, we're on Skype, so I'm going to bug you on Skype. You know, And Andy's one of those guys who he just he's a good person. He won't let go, and I love that for him because uh, there, there are times where even I, where I, I get at my lowest, and Andy will just surprisingly show up in my mentions and go, hey, man, let's can we talk on Skype next week? And I'm like man like how does that guy always know when to reach out to me um so you 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 know so i like i said we could compliment each other all day but the the stuff you make like you know especially right now with everything going on and uh with like you know the the shows um you know about to come back for more seasons coming up and you know obviously there's a shake-up with some of the shows like with batwoman and stuff but you are really enjoying star girl right now and that's kind of been one of your newer focuses on your on your network right yeah, we. Um, the, I was I was in the room when Jeff announced it, uh, and I started setting up the Twitter page, and you know started looking for co-hosts immediately because I knew that you, know, so you and I we both that Cordy is the most important. I mean, it, it is the most important character to him because of his sister, and you know what you know because people who don't, do not know you should go online and read this. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tragic story, but that also 
set you create something beautiful with star girl with how she, her spirit gets to live on through star girl and you know and jeff i mean i like i said I, he's one of the biggest influences in my life in terms of creating and writing and so on and star girl is right now really i mean look the, the world is at its darkest right now and and we need it's almost it, it's like back you know with small premiered you know that month after 9 11 right where it seemed like the world was just over like how had this horrible nightmare actually happened right how had two planes taken down the trade centers right what you know was th- was was this the end of humanity as we know it or was it the, yeah it was at the beginning of the end like we were there was a lot of unknown right it was it was a scary time yeah and then on october 16th 2001 on the wb smallville premiered following the story of clark Kent before he puts on that cape and takes it to the skies mm-hmm. and he showed i mean look we you know you and i know that it can be, it's very easy to make fun of the fact that tom didn't put on the costume he only put on the chess piece for that final shot before you know cu- you know fade to black executive producer right. boom but but i think what small proved was that superman doesn't need that suit to be superman you know and tom Welling can you know look he can he can he can pretend that he only played clark kent, clark kent for 10 years poppycock he was superman to me when he created that fortress and when he began discovering his destiny and exploring his trials and involved that I carried we come to know, know and love for over 70 years and Stargo right now is really giving us that that same feeling Courtney is so she's so inspiring she's so witty and she's so fun and she's so she feels like a real girl from today who you know she wants to, she's discovering this legacy of the JSA which it's become one of my favorite teams uh, because of Smallville because Jeff he one of his first television episodes of all time was the two part Justice Society storyline right. where yep. he got to introduce the JSA to the smaller universe you know we met Hawkman Stargirl Dr. Fate oh good lord Dr. Fate is <laughs> oh I love Dr. Fate so much yeah. uh, and you know we see Clark and Oliver Oliver Queen and so on getting to see this other legacy of heroes and and you know with Stargirl now we're getting to finally explore that in a sort of bigger level and it's really coming at a time where we need that optimism more than ever you know, we need that level of inspiration and we need that level of, you know, true optimism, the way that Courtney carries it. Um, so, yeah, I've been like, you know, I've been, you know, reading a few comics here and there. I'm you know, reading a lot of co- about just society members and so on. And it's been a blast, you know, like, yeah, I mean, the Arrowverse right now is going through the motions because of what's happening on Batwoman and the recent events of The Flash, uh, even though The Flash had a phenomenal season because of the new showrunner, Eric Wallace, who's really revived the show into the great light. Um, but then, yeah, you know, we don't know when we're going to, you know, but then also there's also Super Little, Little Smart, and we don't know when we're going to get them back next year because they've been pushed till, you know, mid-season, but because the next season is beginning in January, they may not come back until... May, June, which sure. is crazy. Yeah. Uh, but Stargirl is really there right now and just like, you know, it's, it's, you know, yes, it's a little bit of classic superhero telling, storytelling, but also it is what we, we it's that light we need right now. Uh, so that's been a lot of fun and I, uh, but also then, you know, we're, you know, we're setting up, you know, we have new shows for the Green Lantern show that is coming on HBO Max. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever ends up being called, being called if it's Green Lantern or something related to Green Lantern we don't know which Lantern it will be you know we know Sinestro will be one of them then there's Strange Adventures which you know as the name says it, it's going to be Avengers that feels strange because we know nothing about it <laughs> um, and then you know Superman and Lois on, on the CW um, you know um, the star of Superman that, that uh, Seek just happened to run into on the streets, which was <laughs> so cool. And he just happened to have a Superman comic in his backpack that he could sign. Um, you know, no big deal. Yeah. Not jealous at all. <laughs> um, 
But um, <laughs> yeah, only so yeah, I, I told some of that story, and they said that's the most LA story I've ever heard. And they're like, so you? It is the most LA story yeah. you would ever you would ever heard. They're, I'm like, yeah, I'm walking down the street with a couple Superman comics in my backpack, going to work. I get to work, and the guy who's playing Superman on the Supergirl show and upcoming so Superman and Lois, uh, Tyler Hoechlin, he's a. Uh, He's just shopping, and he's standing right there as I'm walking into my my uh, the Lego store where I worked, and I'm like, oh my god, you're Superman, and he's like, yeah, bro, what's up? And he was like the nicest guy, and I go, look, I'm sorry, I know you're shopping, and he's like, no, 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 he's like, I go, yeah, I work here, but you know, I'm I'm early, and I'm I can't believe I ran into you, and he talked to me for like ten minutes, and then he and I was like, dude, I just happened to have a Superman comic on. Me. He's like, get out of here, and I showed it to him, and I was like, this is the one where Superman reveals his secret identity to the world, and he's like, dude, I, let me sign it, let me sign it. So he signed it, he talked to me, flipped through the pages, we talked a little bit. I told him about my uh, podcast that I was doing on Patreon, and he was so supportive, such a nice guy. And then I tell Andy that, and I told someone else that. My other friend was like, dude, that's the most LA thing I've ever heard. He's like, how lucky are you? And I'm like, yeah, that was I, <laughs> that was super lucky, was super lucky. Um, and what and what and what area what was this was this in Burbank? No, no, it was in Glendale. Um, yeah, I like well, I, I don't even I don't even know what Tyler Hagen would be doing up there because because I always assumed that he was more like Central LA or maybe uh, East LA and so on. But so like the fact that he was just there shopping and so and the fact that, and and as far as you could tell, no one was even like you know fa- he wasn't like being surrounded by fans and anything like that. So he was kind of able to kind of blend into that environment yeah exactly yeah he was um he's yeah he was very low-key had a hat on you couldn't really the only reason i saw was him is because we just happened to like, lock eyes at the right moment and i was and i had just watched like a supergirl episode the night before um and i was like well i like this guy he's really good at being clark kent and superman and then boom i run into oh it was the uh it was the, one of the crisis episodes and so it was like re- oh, yes, yes. yeah it was literally like right when that show came out so i had just watched the episode the night before and I saw him. That's the only reason I recognized him. I'm like, holy cow! So, yeah, no, it's it's awesome. I mean, those those days are gone because now I live in Orlando, and I don't know if I'll have a lot of run-ins like that anymore. But they were fun while they lasted, Andy. Well, I mean, it's I mean, that will be a story to tell for for <laughs> ages. Yeah. Um, and it's you know, I mean, Tyler is such a he's a, he's a great Superman who I I'm excited to see more. Like now, he actually gets to lead his own show. Yes. Uh, so. Um, that's gonna be fun, but yeah, no, I, you know, these, you know, just kind of just go to one of your questions that you had about these. My kind of just doing all this with these TV is that yes, yeah, it's, it's sometimes there's are there are days where I'm like rolling my eyes, kind of annoyed or maybe pissed off or something, but overall, like it's I wouldn't I wouldn't give it up for anything in the world. Like I would keep it and do it all over again if I had to because these are characters that I've come to know and love for all these years maybe even before so and you know the fact I mean you you know you, you were talking about like me seven years ago compared to where I am now like I remember like you know I, I remember I was telling you about how, how I wanted to do all these interviews and so I, would, I was trying to get in touch with all these publicists and get into all these press rooms and you know no one would get, give me a chance and the following year I was sitting in the, in the season one press room for the Flash and talking to Grant Gustin and, yeah. and Greg Belanti and Candace Patton and so on and you know and, and I I told Grant I was the Flash podcast and then you know two weeks later he followed me back on Twitter and you know the podcast one and then you know every year I've gotten to know him more you know a little more and more about at Comic Con so he like we like, we know each other by name you know he you know he, he's always like you know he like basically he's my Tyler Hecklin uh, <laughs> like you know you have this nicest Superman and I have the nicest Flash uh, and it's just you know I I guess it goes to show that you know working really hard and you know staying true to it and so because yeah I mean because you know I've had pe- my parents question me all the time like you know like, you know you're not making any money out of this, you know. You're not making a career out of this. How, why you keep doing this? So I'm like, because I know one day I will get to, I will get to my dream of being, you know, a journalist and you know making money and you know writing and creating content and so on. And I am there right now. I mean, I'm not maybe on as a staff writer anywhere and so on, but like I, I'm the editor of my own Marvel website. I am, a, you know, a, a recurring freelancer for Screen Rant. You know, one of the biggest entertainment sites of all time. And you know, and all these podcasts that I have is, you know, with, working with all these people that I so honored to know because the, the, the podcast would not be possible without them uh, but yeah I guess it goes to show you know just if you I mean yes if you want to really if you really want to fulfill a dream you know it doesn't matter if it takes seven years 17 years or uh, 
20 years, 50 years. If you really want it, you stick to it. That's exactly it. And seeing you stick to it is what ultimately was one of the reasons why I'm like, you know what, I'm going to... I'm going to throw a curveball out there. I'm going to try something on YouTube with Venom. Originally, it was going to be X-Men, but unfortunately, I made too many friends at Fox, and I I started seeing those movies way before they came out. And for that reason, I was like, well, I can never do an X-Men show now because I pretty much know everything that's going to happen, and I don't want to slip up because I I actually am very bad at biting my tongue sometimes. Um, So I was like, let's not do that. So I went with Venom. Now, Venom's a character that means a lot to me, much like a lot of these characters, have, you you know, you've grown very attached to them. I've grown, like Venom, I've grown more attached to him just by doing a show on him. So, how much exposure have you had, because I know you do the Marvel Report too, and I know we've talked a lot about DC in this episode, but just to tie in a little bit of Venom, um, ha- have there been anything on Marvel Report from you that you covered that were Venom related? Because I know the one thing I mentioned to my friend Dave the Film Junkie is um, you cover, like you're a, a Snyder Cut fan, and I am a big Venom fan, and I feel like for a little while there, we were in the same league because we had hardcore Marvel fans like throwing mud at us. Uh, there was like for Venom, like pe- before the movie came out, people were like, "This movie's gonna bomb." You know, Sony can't make a Venom movie, blah blah blah, and, and it's not gonna be successful. And Venom will never be in the universe with Spider-Man again until Marvel takes over. And obviously, the tides have turned, and now same with Snyder Cut. For years, people have been saying, oh, you're never going to get that, and now Snyder fans are going to get their movie. So, you know, do you see those parallels? And then, and also yes. in that reg- you do? And then in that regard, like, have you co- covered any Venom-related stuff? Um, I mean, I've, I've, done stu- I've done stuff like covering the, the trailers and posts and so on. Yeah. But I... I haven't like done it in a way where, like I've never done it as an editorial, for example. Okay. But I, but I know like the, the, the Venom, the character has always like he's the first Spider-Man villain that ever that ever scared me. Uh huh. I was like you know in the Spider-Man animated series when after he after Peter got rid of the suit and Eddie takes you know becomes the new host and that was the first time in you know one of the first times in animation where I really got scared. Uh, because Venom, is, I mean, and, and for me, and you and I, we ha- we just recently had a conversation about this. It, you know, I, you know, I am one of those people who see Venom as the Spider-Man villain, right. the iconic Spider-Man villain. Mm. But it has such, with time, evolved in such a great way where Venom can be have his own stories that doesn't have to be with Spider-Man. Like I'm, I love Venom the movie. I f- love that movie so much. I actually got to see it on my birthday, <laughs> and that was one of my favorite birthdays because I really loved that film. I thought Tom Hardy was great as Eddie. I loved seeing Riz Ahmed as Riot. That was wait, yeah, that yep. was the name, right? Riot, yeah, yeah. Riot, yep. I um, and he freaked me out too, and I got excited by the post credit scene, and I. You know, I didn't care that he didn't have the, the, the white spider on the, the chest because we know if you're smart, you understand why he can't have it. Yeah, right. He can. Um, he can now, though. Maybe. He can. Maybe. Yeah. He yeah. can now. You know. I mean, <laughs> we, you know, next year we will see. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Venom became. You know, I. I. I not really going to cover Venom in the way that I sh- maybe should have or could have I, but Venom for me has been one of those fa- fa- things that I wanted to just follow and watch and enjoy as a fan and then you know if one, someone wants to have me on their podcast or their video show and so on and talk about the movie or whatever and so on I will go on and I will be a critic and I will talk about it so, but yeah I, I think what Sony has done with Venom is amazing and I'm w- so excited for the sequel and I mean also when you get freaking Andy Serkis involved, <laughs> you can't really go wrong. I mean, listen, Carnage, Carnage, cinematic debut, will be led by Andy Serkis. Yeah, I know. How yeah. lucky are we're so spoiled. <laughs> we're, I mean, we, it, it feels like it's it feels like we're gonna get to the theaters and they're gonna tell us that actually, no. This is not happening. And I'm like, I knew it. It was too good to be true. Because like, it feels like you're getting any circles. The, the king of motion captioners right. and a phenomenal storyteller. And then you have Woody Harrison, who ha- an action with such great range. And what happens when you combine those things? I mean, it, it sh- we should not be getting it in, on, in the theaters, but we're getting it. I know. And there's and there's been other rumors, like, um, because I'm a big fan of Naomi. Uh, uh, was her name Naomi uh, Scott or Harris? She's uh, she was in that new, that movie came out recently called Black and Blue. 
Um, but uh, and she was also in Twenty Eight Days Later, and she played Money Penny and James Bond. Uh, there's been okay, that it was probably Naomi Harris. It yeah, because Naomi Scott is you're thinking Naomi Scott is uh, uh, Jasmine from Atlanta. That's right. So yeah, okay, I, I'm confusing that because someone tweeted about her earlier. So, but yeah, Naomi Harris. She's um there. There's been a picture of of her on set, and there's been rumors of her being cast in a movie as the the sidekick to Carnage, uh, which is a woman named Shriek. Um, so that would be awesome too. I would love to see. Um, Venom go up against a non symbiote, uh, you know, enemy as well. So there's there's a lot of things about this movie that people have been speculating on and rumored on, and unfortunately we got to do wait an extra year for it. But I feel like that's good because that gives Andy Serkis more time to work his magic, and I feel like the movie is only going to benefit from that. Especially you know, if it's a very VFX heavy movie, so I'd rather you know, I don't want the Justice League version of <laughs> uh, Venom Two, Venom 2 right. so. Um, <laughs> You know, I don't. I like here's like I, as much as I, I stand with the release of Snyder Cut movement. I don't want to have to, you know, start you know release a, the the circus, uh, sure cut <laughs> movement or so on. Like you're like yeah, let, let you know if I have to wait till next is it next summer we're getting the film? Yeah, next summer. Yep, right after Morbius yeah. in the spring. Yep. Yeah, I'm like you know what that's perf that's perfect for me. You know, they can take the time to finish it and make it look really really good and so on. Hopefully, we'll get a trailer make this fall or whatever. Uh, or teaser, I guess. Um, you know, so yeah, I write. You know, let let let, let art. You know, pick, to 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 better people out there, let artists take their time to finish their products and visions. Right, it's gonna work out. It's it's all gonna work out. Um, yeah, and and that's okay because we got there's a current Venom cartoon right now called Maximum Venom. So there's there's toys coming out in the fall, new comic books every week. So. I mean, it's. I mean, I picked a really good time to pick to do a show about Venom because there's so much Venom content. Um, oh yes. But I'm glad to hear you like the movie. I did. You know, obviously I did too. I um and I was. You know, I had critic. Of course, we all. You and I both. We love things, but we still can be critical of them. But we still love them. And Venom was one of those things for me. I love Tom's performance, and I can't wait to see him return as this character. And he's the nicest guy in person. Um, and. Uh, yeah, and, I, and I, it means a lot for for because I know you cover a lot. I mean, that's the thing is, I knew you as the Marvel Agents of Shield guy, but nowadays I I almost exclusively refer to you as as my friend who does the DC TV podcast, and it's uh, it's so funny because when you know now that Agents of Shield is back on, it it was like I got to see the first episode last year at D twenty three of this season, and they even told us they're like, yeah, this episode's not going to air for another ten months, but you're still going to see it, you know, today. And I remember thinking, man, I wish Andy was here with me because this is such a, and and my and my friend Gene, because Gene Hoyle, he's a huge Agents of Shield fan, and uh, and also my former roommate uh, Victor in California, he was an extra on season one of Agents of Shield. Um, oh wow! He wow. was he was an actual agent, and uh, and so Victor had a he actually turned into a Hydra agent, agent at the end of the season. Um, oh, now see, I, see, now see, see, you, you made it, you made it, made it seem sound so cool, and then you had to pull out the H, the H word. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Z, we listen, we, we do, we, I, we don't stand Hydra here. Okay. We, we do not stand Hydra. We, um, you don't stand Hydra although, on my, on my show. You don't stand Hydra. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess if I had to stand anyone from Hydra, it's you know Ground Ward because he. <laughs> He's kind yeah. of tall, t- dark, handsome, <laughs> you know. Fair enough. Oh, also, he's one of the, like, Brett Dalton is like the sweetest person in real life. So it's like, it's just so funny that he played this psychopath or this, this complicated character. Because Ward, I mean, listen, when you and I covered S.H.I.E.L.D. together, Ward wasn't really much. Right, he was, he was he one was, of our least favorite characters. Um because but besides his looks like of course he's a good looking guy but we were like what are they going to do anything interesting with him and then wow they did the most interesting thing with him he killed victoria had yeah. like i'm like <laughs> he killed he killed sapo burrows <laughs> shot her in the head on the plane yeah. and i'm like oh damn yeah Oh yep. God! <laughs> what have we done? Uh, Winter Soldier. I mean, listen, and, and that's what what's so fascinating to me is that people, you know, people kept telling me, Andy, why are you podcasting about Shield? It's gonna get cast after one season. Nobody cares. I'm like, Agent Cold is one of the most iconic characters in MCU. Shut up! <laughs> and also, Mulan is playing one of the most badass agents of all time. She makes Black Widow look like a freaking kid. Mulan, um, Mulan, and Chun Li. 
and also uh, what was her character's name in Mandalorian um oh yeah oh my god well she also does the voice of um one of the cops in the Batman cartoon as well um she plays a detective in that one so uh, detective yeah, detective Yen. Yeah, Mingna Wen is an like, an icon to she's, America so she's amazing yeah. I remember when I covered my stuff for Hollywood Reporter my first follower was Mingna Wen and I was like oh so there are days where I regret canceling my old Twitter account but at the same time, I was like, well, after I did those two reports for Hollywood Reporter, I never got to do anything else. So I feel like eventually Ming Na Wen would have unfollowed me anyway. <laughs> but she was a no, sweet. No, I think she, she would have still followed because yeah. she when she got cast as Ming, as as Melinda May, the first few months she was making sure that she would follow a lot of fans and a lot of you know outlets and so on that would support that was supporting Marvel and Shield and stuff like that. And she, you know, Ming Na Wen has been one of the sweetest people to meet and interview and follow for, 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 for all these seven years, you know, for a show that people kept saying wasn't going to be la- la- running for even one season. So, yeah. you know, it's, you know, it's funny. Like, I, you know, I, you know, when you and I first met, I was the shield guy and now I'm like, you know, I'm DCV, the mall pool, whatever. And so, uh, but, you know, but shield is a, a defining series for me that helped me get, where I am today, right. so it is weird. That, you know, today, you know, just a few hours from now, they're going to air episode three of their final season. So, I, I hear you, and I, that's why I said, like, when I was there in that room, I was like, I wish, I wish my three friends were here with me because I can't imagine this show saying goodbye to it without them. So, I'm, I look forward to you know your thoughts on each episode this season. I'll definitely be tuning in. Everyone else out there, please uh, go to the links down below. Uh, follow Andy on Twitter. Um, I'll put links to his uh, you know his different channels on there. Also his YouTube channel, his website. Like please, like subscribe to this guy, watch this guy, listen to this guy if you're not already. Amazing person, good friend of mine, and I look forward to many many years more of friendship and and I can't wait to see look at what you've done in seven years and where we've gotten to today I can't wait to see us in another seven years like and I'm gonna I don't care what doctors say like you said earlier I'm surviving another seven years uh, just so I can watch cool so I can stay I get like comic books are the number one I've wanted comic books to rule the world since I was seven years old and now they finally are so I'm not leaving anytime soon, and uh, and I hope you're you know you're there making great content the whole time with me, uh, dude. And it, it means a lot I, to be your friend. I intend to. I intend to. <laughs> awesome. And, uh, but uh, if 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 I may, there's one one sure. thing I definitely want to plug specifically because um, I, I don't know when this episode will, will go out, but on Saturday, June twentieth, uh, one of the things that my network does every year since we created the network in twenty fifteen is we bring all of the shows that we have together in the network for one big day of live marathon to raise money for a great charity uh, of our choice. Uh, it, we've we've done for cancer, Christopher Reeve Foundation, and uh, Make a Wish. Uh, the world, world, the world, world like wildlife fund, and this year we're working with Feeding America in light of what's going on right now with uh, with COVID nineteen and so on. So uh, we're all ten shows that we have are coming to get on Saturday, June twentieth, to raise uh, two thousand dollars for Feeding America. But of course, if we go, if you know, if when we get 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 to that goal, we we want to go beyond that as well. So uh, just please, please donate, and all the information can be found on dctvpodcast.com slash fundraiser where you can find how to donate where to listen live because we're doing it on Mixler uh, no video but it will be audio live and uh, yeah so that's kind of like what you know why I'm really pushing out there right now and so because it's you know bring you know using all of our subscribers all of our listeners and our fandoms to come together for a great because you know, these marathons can go for like 10 hours and yeah. uh, we, we usually we, we, we wrap up at you know hour 14 or 15 or something like that and you know it's you know it's you know, we, we raise a lot of money a lot of people from the shows ha- like notice us and realize oh wow they're like they're doing something big with their time with their pop with their, with their platforms and right now you know we can use some more unity in the world so tune in that day uh, we're gonna talk about you know like the flash supergirl legend whatever will turn will end up being bad woman uh, you know, Black Lightning, Star Girl, you know, Superman, Lois, Green Lantern, everything else. So it's uh, it's you know that's when you really get to hear all of us together, and it's something that I hold near and dear in my heart five years later. So please uh, t- t- tune in. 
and if you if you need an extra voice on that uh, to help you guys out, I'm happy to to lend my time. So you let let's me, do it. Le, yeah, let me know what I can do. And originally, this was going to air after the 20th of June, but since you mentioned that, I'm definitely going to put this up before June 20th. Uh, so that way we can get that plug out there and people can know where to find this Thank this you. great thing that you're doing. Absolutely, no, no problem at all. And Andy keep doing these great things that you do uh the people you gather around you you're building an amazing network of amazing people and i'm so honored to still be your friend after all these years Aww. and I, I look forward to many more years of uh, great friendship with you man i i could not i, I couldn't say it better myself so yeah <laughs> i look forward to when i you know we're gonna have so much to talk about and cover and nerd out nerd out about and get angry about and <laughs> cry about and laugh about yes or you know be confused about because you know uh, guys being being us can be confusing because <laughs> of things that happens um for example, Bad Woman, you know, you know, you know, this, <laughs> this has really been your week. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, my, the pleasure is all mine. I'm, you know, like you said in the beginning, you know, some people, you know, people fade away, fade away, and you know, they move, you know, they grow apart and so on. But you and I, we, you know, we, you know, we stuck to, through it for seven years. So okay. I'm, I'm excited for more adventures uh, and uh, more craziness because. Uh, that's what happens with uh, with the superhero world. That's right. That's what happens with best friends. So everyone, go check out yes. Andy's stuff. All of his links are down below. Make sure you check out his fundraiser. And uh, and Andy, like I said, we can talk afterwards. And if I can lend my voice to a, a, a segment of that, I will definitely ha be happy to do it. Let's, let's do it. All right. Everyone, thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Leave your comments down below, and we'll definitely continue our conversation down there. See you in the future. Peace.